Hey, I'm Nick and welcome to The Painter's Mess. So today I'm going to go over how I do my general paint scheme for my Horus Heresy Death Guard army. It's super simple. It's a base coat, a wash, a dry brush, and then all the bits and bobs of the rest of the model in super easy steps. I think total on a single model, it takes maybe 50 minutes to complete. Uh, not to include drying time, uh, usually you're going to be batch painting and you're going to be moving on to the next one while the wash or contrast paint dries. So it shouldn't take very long uh, per model and I hope you enjoy it. And, and if you do, let me know in the comments down below. But for now, let's build some models and let's get painting. So as you can see, I've already cut out the legs and Strangely enough, this sprue has the legs next to each other. They don't have them across like you would imagine they would. So you go every two is one set of legs. Uh, and then the arms are opposite of each other. And if you ever open up the Mark III box and made Mark III Marines, you'd see this. So cutting out the legs and the bodies and then cutting out the arms. And for this, in this case, I'm just going to cut out one of them for an example. Uh, the next thing is the backpack and these backpacks are a pain in the ass because half of them, the top half is a different piece from the bottom half. And then they have the little, uh, nub in the weirdest spot and stay tuned later in the video. I find like the best way to get these out. So once I clean off the mold lines and, uh, on the backpack and on, on the arms and stuff like that. I throw a little dab of glue and put them all together. So this is the body with um, the placket torso that I 3D printed. Um, this particular print does have a issue with the, there's like a line, like a failed print line in the middle of the stomach, but this is what it looks like. Um, I really like these plackets for heavy uh, infantry and again I couldn't find good legs to 3d print so I bought these boxes of mark 3 marines just for these legs the backpacks and the arms and here I have some 3d printed uh, shoulder pads that I really like um, I've done a couple that have the little ball bearings. I can't remember what they're called molecular studs and then death guard shoulder pads. And those are basically exactly the same as the ones you would buy from forge world, except I can print a bunch of them for a lot cheaper because forge world is so expensive. So uh, a lot of the time on flat surfaces for 3d printed stuff, I score the surface with uh, an exacto knife. And this helps create a better bond, especially with plastic going on to resin. So I throw a little super glue. Oops, missed that one a little too much. And I glue the arms on. Now, I, I use the super glue that I dropped because why waste glue? But this particular 3D print um, for both the body and the last cannon, the body does have, uh, or the arm has a little piece that sticks out from the body and it'll make it a little awkward, but uh, it's not too bad. And the last cannon has a wrist and the wrist doesn't quite sit into the wrist socket of the um, arms, but it works well enough and it'll, it'll be just fine. So I throw a little dab of super glue in the hand and on the wrist and I kind of wiggle the last cannon inside. And here's a neat trick. If you have accelerator, uh, super glue accelerator, you know, get everything in position to where you want it. Open up your super glue accelerator from like unscrew it without actually pulling out like the spray part and take the little nozzle 
or, or the, the tube and dab a little dot into each of those spots. And it actually works a lot better because it's more precise and you don't get your model completely liquefied with the accelerant. But, it, and it's like, it works super well. So I throw some glue on all the other surfaces, the where the backpack goes, the two shoulder pads, and I just toss them on there. Um, I don't throw any accelerant on them. I, they're good enough as they are once they get settled in. The next thing I have are these, uh, the Death Guard, they're three printed helmets and they are again, replicate, replicated from the Forge World Death Guard helmets that you can get um, without of course spending all of the money for Forge World and I will admit 3D printing is fantastic. Throw a little dab of glue on the bottom of his feet and throw them on the base. I don't plan on doing the base for this video. Um, I kind of went over it in another one. And if, if you guys want to see that later, I will do a whole basing video because I do use green stuff and it does take a little bit to cure. And I wanted to get this video out as soon as possible. So there will be no base done in this video, but just the paint scheme. Cue the building montage. So here's this little neat trick with the sprues. So against the, of where they pop out, you just put your finger on it and you push and it actually gives you a clean break on those like really awkward spots. And then I just twist off the other half and it pops right out. And it saves you obviously like 30 minutes of clipping when all you have to do is just push, give it a little push, twist, and then you can actually just take an X-Acto knife and clean the little exhaust vents from the bottom of the backpack. And it's super fast and effective, especially with the Mark III backpacks that you get from the GW kit. I'll be honest, I don't always clean off the little nubs from the exhaust vents. I don't really care that much to be that precise. Uh, none of these infantry units are going into a competition for anything other than, you know, maybe an army, a full army paint competition. But again, it's not really worth my time to do that, but I could see why some people, you know, it would bug them. If they're pretty outrageous, uh, like nubs on there, I will clip them off. But for the most part, like the small, small little things, uh, I don't really care that much.
So here's the sergeant, and this is going to be the one that I'm going to use for the painting video, or for the painting aspect. Um, the placket is slightly different, it has that ball in the middle, and then again he has the bare skin uh, head with the mask. Um, the molecular, molecular stud shoulder pad is slightly different as well. So on to the painting. I started with uh, the wraith bone spray. I usually use that ivory that I just showed, but I wanted to this paint job to be as accessible to everyone as possible. So I went outside, sprayed them all, and just with a wraith bone uh, GW paint. And my next step is to start with the Skeleton Horde contrast paint. And you can either put this through an airbrush or you can literally just dab it onto all parts of the armor. You can be generous here. You don't have to be super like uh, light about it. I do make mine a little lighter, but you're gonna, we're gonna dry brush over it. So it's gonna be, it's gonna make it different anyway but you can definitely be generous and get this kind of all in the nooks and crannies of the armor. And sorry about the autofocus. I will shut it off here shortly because this is a pain to look at, but I'll, I'll correct it and it won't be as, as bad. Just give it a second. I'm also going to leave this video in as real time as possible. Um, obviously, I there there will be breaks for drying time, and the biggest break is letting the contrast paint dry. Um, if if I'm doing batch painting, you know the contrast paint is drying on one model while I'm working on another, so there is some time difference in how long this painting actually takes but per model I think each model takes roughly around an hour and that's you know me being a little bit particular on certain things and not as sloppy on others um, obviously I'm using contrast the contrast paint right out of the pot I probably would have normally put this on a wet palette and gone from there or I would have just sprayed it through the airbrush and made it so much faster but I didn't want that to be a limiting factor for the general populace who's watch, you know, who are watching this video and kind of seeing how I paint Death Guard. Um, not everybody has an airbrush. Not everybody knows how to use an airbrush. So I wanted this to be as, you know, as easy as possible uh, for everybody else. So I will leave it in real time and I will shut up and uh, let's continue watching. I will, of course, chime in to uh to you know explain what i'm doing and why i'm doing it So next, I just grabbed some black. Uh, I'm using the Pro Acryl Black. I watered it down a lot, which I, I kind of wish that I hadn't, and, and I made it a little thicker, but I do come back on the second coat later on. Um, I'm putting this over the weapon now because when I do the dry brushing later, 
The dry brushing will also help pick out some of those edges, those raised edges on the, the last cannon. But for now, it's just to get it on a base coat. Like I said, I am gonna go back over later uh, again with black, just to give it a little bit more uh, dark, <laughs> to make it more black than, than is if it you know went over with contrast paint. Um, but I do do this a couple times throughout the video. And it's just to give it a base coat. Um, I do kind of plan on doing base coats for as much as I can before I do the dry brushing. Uh, that sounds like it might be counterintuitive because I'm putting a different color paint than what I actually want the edges to be. But once I dry brush it, uh, I also dry brush again with a metallic and it gives it a nice metallic sheen, shine, uh, as well as, you know, the highlight that you're going to get from the dry brush. So I come back in with a little bit of black, do what I can to kind of pick out the the weapon from the hand, uh, there's a little gap in between, and yeah, it's just black paint. Any kind of black paint will do, Abaddon black or uh, Vallejo black or whatever black you have. Thin it down, get it on the gun, and uh, keep painting. From here we move on to dark camo green and that is my primary green for my death guard army uh, again pro krill i'm super fond of pro krill and I, I use their paint almost exclusively i do use you know full, a, a few gw paints and i will be using a vallejo paint in here it's just the, the orange that i'll use later um, to represent rust but I do like this green. I think it's a nice, dark, deep green that kind of suits the Death Guard aesthetic. And I just slap it on to the pauldrons. I'm not worried about getting it into the metallic areas of the pauldron or on the part that's going to be white of the Death Guard symbol. I just want to get the green everywhere I can because I'm going to paint right over it with those other colors. and and make it as as simple as possible so do you know the deepest colors first and then move on to the next one next i'm throwing on some contrast paint on his head just some little bit of gilliman gilliman's flesh uh over the skin and again it's super simple super easy I don't go too heavy, but I do put a, a good coat on it. And with the dry brush later on, it actually picks out the highlights of the forehead. And I don't have a whole lot of work to do after I dry brush over the head with the rest of the body, which is very nice. And we're right at a part in the video where it looks like garbage and that's okay because once we jump into the next part um, or at least the the highlighting and the dry brushing it changes the whole model and it actually looks fantastic once it's done again just taking a little bit of black going over those cables they're all gonna get dry brushed again uh, or dry brushed at the same time so it gives it the highlight that it needs and you're doing all of these little steps first so you don't have to do them later and I do come back and do some touch-ups after I do the dry brush 
Um, but for the most part, this gets, you know, 85% of the model done before you even do the highlights and then do the trim and then do a few other things and it's the model's done. So I know it looks like garbage, but trust me, it's gonna turn out significantly better here shortly. Yeah, so like I said, I go back and kind of add a little bit more black to the last cannon, just again, so it doesn't look as if I threw on some contrast paint. I do want it actually black before I do my dry brushing. And just a little bit, a second round, a second coat of paint usually does the trick. Sometimes you need three, uh, just depends on what you're going over. Since I was going over Wraithbone, it is very bright, trying to go straight to black. So two to three coats is probably going to be needed, but as of right now, I just do a second coat, let it dry, and move on to the next, next part. So I'm using ivory as my uh, dry brush coat. Uh, usually you could just, I could go back to Wraithbone. I didn't wanna pull out the paint pot for Wraithbone, but um, usually it's just the primary color that you started with. Since I normally do ivory, I'm, but I, I'm really low on that paint. I just ordered more. Um, I, I just use what's left of that bottle to do the dry brush and it is a heavy dry brush. I'm using a small makeup brush that I got from my wife when she was uh, replacing her makeup brushes. It's super soft, super easy, or super nice with little bristles. And all it is is a heavy dry brush. So I throw some paint on paper usually, um, get it all wet, and then you know dry it off. I don't quite use a paper towel to do that, but um, just a little bit of, of paper um, I feel it doesn't absorb as much as if a paper towel would and doesn't leave as much of a chalky texture, but it is a very heavy dry brush. I do try to pick out some of the edges, but I want most of the contrast paint to be covered up in this case. I want the, the, the armor to look closer to the pale bone ivory color than the yellowish skeleton horde color and every time I pull the model away is me going to get more paint on the on the dry brush to to keep going and that's why I kind of move it out of frame but I just take that dry brush go over all parts of the model uh, I do avoid the shoulder pads um, because you don't need to dry brush the green uh, to white but I do dry brush the last cannon and his head and kind of just do everywhere I can and again this doesn't take very long uh, this is all real-time painting so you can see how fast I go through it and looking at the last cannon so it, it was black now I've dry brushed it it gives it a good highlight gets all of those edges and then I'm gonna do another dry brush later with some metallics and it's just gonna it, it's gonna turn it from you know a highlighted black weapon to a nice highlighted metallic and it's gonna match the rest of the rest of the model
I just want to say if you've stuck with this video this far uh, thank you so much I know this video is going to be between 50 and 55 minutes with you know all of the content in it like I said I'm leaving it as raw as possible and as real-time as possible um, so that you can see how fast I actually go through this process so again if you've made it this far and if you continue to keep watching thank you so much I really appreciate it so compare and contrasting these models the uh, guy on the right with the lightning claw on the fist was uh, airbrushed with the ivory and then airbrushed the contrast paint on and then dry brushed with the ivory so they're they're very similar they don't look a whole lot different um, there is a very slight difference because of the airbrush but they look so close and so similar that when you put them in an army nobody would look know the difference if you had airbrushed them or you know brush regular brush them on and it, they they do look very good and will look good next to each other on a tabletop and here's one uh, with uh, where I just did not paint the gun um, but I, I'll, I'll go and dry brush that one by itself and then try the, the gun later, the last gun later. But, you know, they look so good. Just how they are. So next I take the bronze, uh, again, Pro Acryl bronze, and I start doing all of the trim. And compared to regular, you know, Chaos Space Marines from 40K or Death Guard, Plague Marines from 40K, the Mark III trim is significantly easier than any Chaos trim ever. And all you do is take, you know, uh, try to be as precise as possible and be uh, as meticulous as possible. Um, is that the right, right way to say that? Try to be, you know, as uh, accurate as possible. And you just do the trim with some bronze, super easy, super quick. You know, it might get annoying because you're doing trim on, you know, 100, maybe 100 models of Death Guard uh, for a whole army, uh, maybe more, but uh, it's not too bad. Again, just try to be as accurate as possible. If you do make any mistakes, you can go back with Wraithbone, uh, go back with your contrast paint, or take the ivory and kind of go over it. Um, for me, I do make a couple mistakes here and there. I just don't mind uh, if it's a little off. You can also use that same spot for, you know, weather damage. Um, I do some weathering later in the video, and I could just cover that up with the brown uh, as if, you know, paint chipped away from that one spot. Um, but for me, if it's not too noticeable or not in a huge place, I'll just let it slide. I don't mind.
So next, I just throw a wash of Ag Agrex Earthshade onto the trim just to give it a little bit more depth. Um, yeah, pretty simple, pretty easy. There's not a huge gap of time in between uh, painting the trim and when I throw this this wash on, um, because you know I I don't paint I don't just slap paint on. I mean it was relatively fast, but um, usually all of that's dry by the time you you know you get your paint pot out, open it up, throw a little bit on a palette, and and start painting again. So there was not a whole lot of time difference in between me throwing the wash on and and doing the, the trim initially. Once I'm done with that, I take a little bit of non oil um, and I throw that on the gun and the pipes. Um, it's not 100% necessary. I could have just used a thin black to do that. Um, to be honest, it really wasn't the smartest idea because non oil takes a little bit longer to dry, uh, just like every other wash does. And when I try to go back and do the dry brush with the metallic, it does get a little um sticky because i didn't wait for it to fully dry i am impatient and that's kind of my fault i should have picked a different i should just gone with a regular acrylic paint to kind of deepen those shadows again but here we are i'll do that on the next one and uh, that's a lesson learned right there So again, just coming back and doing some touch-ups, um, the pipes were a little too bright for me. So I threw a little bit of black paint on the front pipes, came back in again with that Nolan oil. Don't know why I did that. Um, on the back pipes, I'll touch it up again later. But uh, just while the Laz Cannon is drying, and the other wash is drying, just trying to accomplish some of the other bits uh, on the model that I can. And speaking of other bits, uh, I move on to the dark silver, which for me, Death Guard don't have a whole lot of silver, at least, at least this unit's not gonna have a whole lot of dark silver on. Those um, calf metallic spots, I don't even know what those are but I usually cover those with a silver metallic. Sometimes I'll do the inside of the uh, backpack fan in metallic as well. It kind of just depends on how I'm feeling, um, but I think only on this model, or at least for this model and this for this unit, I don't go back and do the fan. I just do those little like calf pieces. And that's pretty much about it for dark silvers.
So on to some weathering. Um, I, I usually over weather all of my models. Um, and a lot of the time they don't come out right, which is one of the issues I have with the more tap that I did. Um, and it, the, the final video of the Moritat or the final showcase of it might be slightly different from the actual model because uh, I might go back and fix some of the weathering. But I took a warm brown, uh, again, Pro Acryl, and you could use Rhinox Hide here. And I kind of just dab it in a few spots where it, uh, the armor would chip. So kind of open areas on the legs, on the, you know, the arms, the chest, basically anywhere where... Uh, this model probably got shot or or you know got clipped uh, running through a trench or running through buildings or something like that and through a little bit of uh, thin down warm brown to kind of represent the the white uh, ivory uh, paint chipping away from the armor Again, try not to go too much with this. Um, you can over, at least for me, I feel that you can overdo chipping. Um, every time I see somebody do a bunch of chipping, it always looks amazing. But every time I overdo it, I feel like it is just overdone and it looks terrible. So. Just be careful with how much you do. Um, as far as you know your own personal preference uh, next I just take any white um, I'm using the bold titanium white by Prolacryl and I just take a very sharp small paintbrush and kind of highlight the bottom of that chipping effect that I did or kind of around the area so in the case on the the, the leg just now on the side where the edges I went around the whole chip to kind of give it a little bit more depth and I just kind of do that all around the model where I did all the chipping from I also take that white and do some edge highlights on some of the other edges around the armor. Um, I don't go too much into edge highlighting on this particular model. Um, some models I do do a lot more highlighting on. This one, again, it's it's a basic infantry. It's not a character. I'm not going to put as much time and effort into it. But, you know, do whatever you want. It's your model. Uh, depending on how much time and effort you want to put into each one, that's all you but again, a little bit of a white highlight gives a little uh, depth, but it's not 100% necessary since we did the dry brush initially anyway. And that does catch those edges. So now I'm taking out my favorite orange color ever. It's Mars Orange by, by Scale 75. Um, I don't know why I like this orange this so much, but it makes the perfect rust color. Um, super thin down, it's super matte. Uh, it's not super thin down, I thinned it down, but it is super matte because it's Scale 75. And I thin it down just enough to get a little bit uh, kind of like a glaze and I take that same uh, glaze and I just go over those same spots of, of weathering that I just did so it gives the brown you know um, battle damage just a little bit more depth and then I take that same you know little bit of paint and I drag it down as if rust rusty water is kind of oozing from those spots Apologize for the focus of the camera. Uh, 
I do fix it a little bit, but uh, I like I said, I don't, uh, I think I mentioned in a previous video, I don't have a wide lens yet. And with my whole uh, deployment coming up, I'll probably pick up a new camera when I get to theater or, or shortly before, but until then I'm just gonna stick with what I got uh, and do what I can. So again, I apologize for focus and hopefully these videos are a lot closer uh, and a lot more um, visually appealing than my initial ones. I am learning still and doing what I can. So back to the painting, I just throw in some of that orange in the crevices basically as if I was using a wash uh, and doing some pin high, uh, pin uh, washing and it gives it just a little bit more depth and color than just the pale armor. So once I'm done with that, I go on to highlighting the bronze. Uh, again, Pro Krill light bronze. It's just the brighter version of their bronze. And I use this to edge highlight all of the metallics. So for the molecular bonding studs, I just do a little dabs on the tops of them to give them a little bit of uh, shine. All the other bonding studs inside the armor panels or inside the shoulder pads all get a little highlight edge highlight the edges just to you know pull them out a little bit you could go back with like some rune fang steel or like a bright uh chrome to really make them pop but it's death guard you don't need that chrome just give it a little highlight make it look good and move on to the next bit So I just take a little bit of that orange uh, again and I just poke them in the eye with it. Um, I don't plan on really doing the eyes. I want to give it a little bit of a glow and that's the easiest and quickest thing that I can do. So uh, on to the next little bit is just doing a little bit of white highlight on the uh, tubes because they're black. Uh, and because I went over them multiple times, I just do a little bit of white highlight, makes them look good, and uh, that's it. So uh, here I take out the Rune Fang Steel um, from GW. Again, you could use any bright silver. Um, I prefer Rune Fang Steel over the Pro Acryl Silver. Um, not sure 100% why, probably just because it's a little thicker. And I take this uh, 
this is a little chisel dry brush has a little chiseled edge and you can see I'm just gonna take a little bit from the pot dab some on the black paper that's right there um, kind of get as much off as I can to make it you know as, as real and close to a dry brush as possible and I start dry brushing the uh, las gun now I have been this video has been in as real time as possible the most of the breaks are me getting paints out of my drawers or grabbing them from you know the racks uh, facing me so you've seen as much as I have in regards to how fast the non oil dried on the last gun or the last cannon so uh, I do pull out some of the uh, kind of half dry uh, non oil when I do this dry brush but the dry brush looks fantastic because it's just that bright steel going over the already highlighted um, black las gun So the next part, uh, I use this bright neutral gray from Procryl. You can use Celeste, Celestia gray or, or, or gray sear or any kind of off white to do the um, death guard symbol. Again, I like Procryl. I use Procryl most of the time. It's super, they're super compatible with, you know, any other color, any off white, uh, kind of a cool off-white for me looks good for the shoulder pad and you can take it a step farther I don't but you could with a step farther of either an Agrax Earthshade wash and then uh, a re you know reapply of that that base coat um, or you could you know use non oil whatever floats your boat in this case just to give it that little a little bit more grungy you know corroded look but for me the, the clean death guard symbol is good enough. The last thing that I do is throw a little bit red into the little eye scope of the LAS cannon. I don't know why there's an eye scope on the side of the, the, the gun, but hey, you know, make it look good. And that's, that's pretty much the model at this point. Oh, spoke too soon. I do take a little bit of turquoise. You can also use the night nitrous oxide noxious oxide from gw the technical paint make sure you thin it down but i just like um the matte finish of pro acryl with the turquoise and i just add a little bit of thinned kind of glazed turquoise in to the the brass areas so in his face mask in the molecular bonding studs in that thing in the chest kind of all over that I can where you would imagine uh, liquid or water would pool and start rusting and uh, oxidizing the brass on their armor.
final little touch-ups, second round of coding for uh, the Death Guard symbol, and we're pretty much just left with this. So how do you think I did? Do you like this game? Uh, what would you change about it? Um, are there any critiques or comments? Uh, throw those comments down below. I would love to read them. I would love to talk to uh, you about them. Um, if you've made it this far, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you think I've earned your subscription through this uh, content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I do plan on releasing more content as I can. Again, my life is pretty hectic right now and just sitting down and be able to paint uh, even just a single model makes my, you know, anxiety go down a little bit. It, it really helps calm, calms my nerves and, and really helps my mental clarity. So I hope that this video helps you, uh, with your death card army. I hope you like the series. Uh, again, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for making it this far. My name is Nick. This is the painter's mess. Go paint one mini at a time and I will see you in the next video.